Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now, before we get started, if you're enjoying the knowledge nuggets I'm dropping in my shows and just digging what I'm screaming here, then smash that like button and subscribe and spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Are you ready to kick 2020 to the curb? I sure as hell am. For New Year's Eve, many people will have parties with friends and family. As I talked about in my previous three holiday specials, please celebrate safely. Follow the CDC guidelines regarding the pandemic. Keep any gathering small, ideally just your household. If you do have guests, then they should have effectively been in a bubble. That is, they don't interact with others outside the bubble other than you. That doesn't mean they can't run errands. That just means they shouldn't be socializing with anyone else other than you. Okay, so what do I have for today? Now, I picked three sparkling wines for today. All are free samples. For all three, I'm just going to give you the stats for all the wines first and then get right into them. If you want the backstory of each winery, then I'll have links below for the reviews I did recently of the other wines from these wineries. All right. First, I'm going to start off with the non-vintage Domaine Bousquet Brut Rosé. Suggested retail price is 13 bucks. It is the Charmat method. That is a tank method where the second fermentation happens in a tank rather than the bottle. It's 75% Pinot Noir, 25% Chardonnay. They use organic grapes. It's a 4,000 foot elevation vineyards in Tupangato. It has gravel and sand soil. It's a manual harvest. It's 12% ABV. It is a brute, but it's RS or it's residual sugar. Is 12 grams per liter. Now that is the upper limit of what's considered brute. And the acidity is a 5.5 grams per liter. Wine number two is the non-vintage Ferrari Brut. It retails anywhere from $24 to $28. It is a Blanc de Blancs, which just means it's Chardonnay. It's champagne method. They also do hand harvesting. And it's aged at least 20 months on lees. Its ABV is 12.5%. Last, if you watched my Chateau de Brzee Claude de la Rue episode, you'll, rem you'll remember I was super excited to review this Cremant from the same winemaker. I'll throw up a map I made from Google Earth to show you what vineyard the grapes for this wine came from. So this wine is the non-vintage Arnaud Lambert Cremant de Loire Brut Brzee. It retails anywhere between $23 and $27. It is 75% Chenin Blanc, 25% Chardonnay. It is a Cremant, which means it must use the Champagne method. It is aged for 24 months on the lees. It is a Brut. It has 5 grams per liter of sugar for the dosage. And it was disgorged December of 2017. Its alcohol percentage is 12.5% ABV. All right, let's get into each of the wines. So by magic, all the foils are off. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour all three at the same time. That way it's just done. So I got the three glasses out. So it was really cool that I had the, uh, the Bousquet and the Ferrari. They had given me multiple bottles for the reviews. And I really wanted to do this sparkling for this episode. I'm going to give myself a healthy little pour. I may not do any spitting. I don't have any more reviews I'm going to do tonight. The Ferrari, they I did the rosé for Thanksgiving. That rosé was super delicious. I really liked it. I'm really excited to try this one. This is just like their, basically their entry level brute. The initial email had a vintage one, but I responded too late, so I didn't get the vintage. And the original email, if I remember correctly, just said I was going to get the, um, the rosé and then the Brute showed up, which I was super excited about. Don't grab the neck when you're doing that. There we go. Ooh, you can really smell that kind of bread brioche thing off of that. Wow, highly aromatic. And again, I'm excited about this one too. That Chenin Blanc from the Chateau de Brzee or Arnaud Lambert was super, super delicious. I, I haven't finished that bottle. I was telling my, some people from my tasting group about it that I might bring it as a bonus wine when I go back to doing tasting group. Right now I've decided to skip tasting group for a while so that um, 
the positivity rate here in Bear County goes down. So all I do is just go to work and that's it. Stay home. Don't go anywhere else. All righty. So, oh, real quick. If you do this with, with any type of sparkling wine, especially champagne method stuff, get a champagne stopper like this that has the little clamp. Don't get the one that has like the has like the like the pincer thing or the one that screws. Those suck. This is the only one to use. I'll put a link below on Amazon where I bought these, but any of this type of style, these really keep it clamped down and keep the carbonation in. This will these wines will easily last a full week in the refrigerator with no problem. All right. So the bouquet. Wow, that's really cool. It gets this really great strawberry and watermelon type of aromas off of it. That was a it's a right, the Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. I'm just gonna scroll up real quick to get to my notes. Just make sure I remember what was in this. Yeah, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. It's a lot of Pinot Noir too. That's it's kind of surprising. But it really enhances that red fruit characteristics. It really just smells like a rosé, but you smell the bubbles, you smell the carbonation, so you're like, oh, this is going to be bubbly. Some red flowers, more like pink flowers, like just really light floral. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit of touch, touch of floral. A little bit orange also, orange blossom. Let's try it. Okay. All right, you threw a little curve, little curveball to me, little bousquet there. All right, so first of all, it has everything that it has on the nose. It's like the strawberry in there. It's got a little bit of raspberry to it, a little bit of watermelon, a little bit of that orange blossom, a little bit of orange, and all that. But there's like this almost like hay, not hay, but like like hay um, type of quality, like like kind of dried grass, a little bit of kind of green to it like a little or slightly herbaceousness to it. And I'm really getting kind of like this, this strawberry, strawberry like muffin or strawberry croissant type, like, yeah, strawberry croissant type of thing. So you get kind of that flaky bakery type of stuff. Um, that's kind of coming on the back end. I almost want to say like a strawberry cheesecake, but I think I was thinking strawberry shortcake because more of a, a, you know, a bread type of thing. Yeah, that, that, that herbaceous was not on the nose. It's ever so slight on, on the palate. You get this kind of drying out, like a little bit of like dried grass type of thing. But it's it's very faint now. It's It, it was like initially it was kind of like, ooh, and now it's a little bit faint, faded out. It's super delicious. It's got great mouthfeel. The bubbles are great. I know it's Charmant, so I mean it's tank method. And I mean, that's the second most preferred way to, to get the bubbles in your wine, but that, does, that doesn't mean it's in, inferior. Um, it tastes really good and the mouth feels really good. Like if, if you didn't know any better, you could easily be like, well, this is champagne or champagne method. And some be like, okay, it's got the proper grapes to it. The, the Pinot Noir is a little bit higher than I'm used to seeing in, a, in, in even in a rosé, but uh, yeah. I like this one a lot. Especially for that under $20 price. All right. The Ferrari. I remember, I really, really enjoyed that rosé that I have from them. And go back to that episode. You can watch like the Google Earth like map thing I did. And you see all the mountains that surround the winery. Really great scenery around that winery. It's a little unusual. It's got a bit of funk to it. A good way. I wasn't expecting that. Like when I opened it, it was like that that bakery, that bakery, you know, brioche type of thing. It's kind of like almost like a sourdough right now. Yeah, a little funk. Also hay. Dried grass. Pear, green apple, 
touch of lemon lime citrus. It's kind of I, you know you don't really need to or really should swirl a sparkling wine because you don't want it to like you don't want the uh, carbonation to leave any faster than it's going to already. But I, I kind of feel like I need to swirl a little bit maybe to blow off some of that stuff that funk. It kind of blew off a little bit. I mean, it's this is this may have been kind of a reductive type of thing going on there, that little funkiness. It was a little sulfurous. It's still kind of there. But yeah, you have that lemon, lime, pear, green apple for sure. Let's check it out. Okay, you know I talked about how with this wine, the average person would be like, yeah, it tastes like champagne. It feels like champagne. But then you put a champagne method right next to it. And there's definitely a difference in the mouthfeel and what they call the mousse. Um, the, the bubbles are finer and it, it coats, it coats better. It's a little bit broader. It's got the carbonation. And I mean, I'm not saying it's not a fair fight because I mean, it, it's kind of an apples and oranges comparison, you know, two different countries. This has Chardonnay. This has a little bit of Chardonnay, but different, different type of, um, of method. They both are carbonated, but yeah, this wine is absolutely killer. This is killer for under 20 bucks. Like, it's really good. And like, the average person would be like, yeah, I'll drink that. But this, I mean, it really feels like I'm drinking a champagne, right? And I still get that sourdough to it. it it's, it's really good. Get a little sourdough, a little croissant, a little bakery, a little pasta. So all those, and that's all from the Lee's aging. What, what, what? is giving you all that kind of stuff. You get that green apple. It's like super tart green apple. It's almost like the green apple, like, like candy. It's like that has that like really like tart flavor to it. You also get like that pear underripe pear. You get the green apple, a touch of lime, not really lemon, but a touch of lime to it. A little bit of margarita mix, but like in the tart side. This stuff's legit. I'm just telling you. Get you some. All right. The Chateau de Brizzy or Breezy. Breezy Wheezy. All right. Sorry, it just came out. I mean, anyway. Oh, wow. So again, a little bit of funk, but not in the sulfurous way. But that's like, but it, I think the sourdough is a little bit more pronounced on this. But it's also like a sweet bread. I actually get a little bit of orange and peach, which uh, Chenin Blanc, peach and orange is not unusual, especially the peach. Fig. I mean, it's almost like my, uh, from last week's episode, almost like a little bit of the fruitcake type of thing, but not quite. I'm not going to say there's any almond in it because I think I'm searching for that now because it had in my head that it's kind of like that uh, Pond de Ego. But yeah. Let's just taste it. So it's super tasty. It's carbonation isn't as high as this. The mousse isn't as rich and lush and full body. I'm not saying it's flat. It's not flat. I mean, it, it definitely has the carbonation to it. But in many ways, I should have done this second and then this one last. Uh, it tastes really good, though. It's got, again, a little bit of that. It has a little bit of green apple. But it's like this white peach, almost like a white peach tea to it. I don't really get as much of that bread, like that sourdough, as, mu as much as I got on the nose on the palate. Yeah, it's more on the nose than the palate for that type of bakery sourdough type of thing. 
yeah, the peach is coming through a little bit more. The orange is coming through a little bit more. It's super delicious. I like, I have, the wine still up here. I like this wine better. Well, it's also a, probably a better wine because it's a vi vineyard designated wine, but that wine, that wine kicks some major bootay. This is super delicious. If you can find this wine, um, I highly suggest you get it, especially because it's, it's something to be different. It's not 100% Chardonnay. It's even like this, you know, this is actually kind of cool too. I mean, first of all, it's Argentina. Like, heck yeah. Um, but, sorry, a little bit of carbonation there. Anyway, any of this non-champagne grapes, you should always seek out because it broadens your palate to other flavors that sparkling wine can be. So this being mostly Chenin Blanc with a little bit of Chardonnay in it, I highly suggest you get this or any Cremant de Loire, but I, this guy does a really great job. If you get like Cremant de Alsace, Cremant de Bourgogne, Cremant de Bourgogne is going to be the same thing as Champagne as far as the grapes. So that's not branching out as much. It's just getting cheaper Champagne is really what you're getting. But um, you get the, the Cremant from... Uh, uh, Alsace, Cremant from Loire, you get the Bordeaux Cremant, <laughs> and uh, so you, it's, yeah, you're going to get some really cool stuff out of these. This one I really want to kind of sit back and really analyze a little bit more. Yeah, that peach and orange is really coming through. The colors between the two are almost identical. Yeah, wow. It's almost like now, like a little bit of burnt toast on that. And this is like this really like highly aromatic, like rose petals and strawberry. Like I wanted all three in the, all in the glass at the same time so I can go back and forth between them. It's warming up. It's aerating. It's really opening that up. That's really good, honestly. It's the flavor. It's so flavorful. It's not sweet, but I mean, it's just like you can really get the good tart fruit out of that. Yeah, and you're getting kind of a little burnt toast on it. I kind of, I kind of dig that, but a little Maillard reaction going on there. Look it up. Warm croissant, a little butter on that. It's not buttery, but you have like that kind of that butter croissant like it's it's warmed up like you, like you put in the oven and put in the microwave for just a little bit and just kind of heat it up and it really kind of accentuates their croissants butteriness got a little sweet tart on this a little lime lemon sweet tart green apple again and also get a little more minerality. I get minerality off of this one, and I don't get minerality off the other ones. Like the wet rock. And it's not a descriptor I usually use for a sparkling wine. But yeah, that, that sweet tart, that again, green apple, white peach. Not so much of an orange anymore, but it's, it's there a little bit. It's good. I like them all. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit buzzed from all these. Plus, I kind of finished off those sherries from last week. So we're going to wrap it up. So that's going to be today's show. Again, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And then tell your friends. And until next time, well, I have too many glasses. Until next time, we'll see you later. Drink these.